poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Tactical Tuesday on Chasing Poker Greatness with your hosts, Brad Wilson and John Chai. Welcome, my friend, to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. As always, this is your host, the founder of ChasingPokerGreatness.com, Coach Brad Wilson, and I'm joined by my perpetual co-host, Mr. Jonathan Chai. How are you doing, sir? Doing good. Got a whole bunch of hands for today's episode. Our, we're back to our forehand, forehanded episodes, and so got a lot to fit in today. Yeah, what's the, what's the theme? What are, what are we going to talk about? The theme is a question. Would you race here? <laughs> I mean, is that so much a theme? Like, don't you ask yourself that? Like, pretty much every single hand that you play, that's v uh, Would you raise in this post-flop spot? Excuse me. Okay, that's okay. that's the question. Yeah, I should have specified not pre-flop. Yeah. All right. Would you raise here? Got it. Um, I have no idea what that means, but I guess we're me and the audience will all learn together the spots. Another way to phrase the theme is, should I have raised here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hand number one, looks like you got two eights, the old snowman. Um, MP opens to 2.2. Uh, you got some depth, both you and you and um, hijack or MP have about 150 bigs and you're in the cutoff. Um, so you decide to squeeze or not squeeze, but yeah. three bet. I think the last thing that I, uh, we can't see the HUD stats right now, but the, uh, middle positioner player who just opened the $24 is kind of on the whaley side. You wouldn't really be able to tell his opening size looks extremely reggy. Um, yeah. but this was a, definitely a fish and maybe just a straight up whale. Okay. So three betting the eights for value. Eureka. You did it. You flopped the set. Mm, versus um, the whale. Versus the whale. Uh, kind of a, you know, it, it, it's a board. Five, five, eight, nine with two spades. So we have a three, uh, three straight as well as a two, uh, three straight as well as a two flush. So two tone. Um, I imagine Dylan's going to check. I don't know why I imagine that. Sometimes they <laughs> don't check. But I, I assume they're going to check. Uh, and now... First decision point is, um, you know, flop sizing here with your set. Um, hope I go big. I don't remember the size that I went. I assume that the smallest I'm ever going to go in this spot is half. Uh, hope I went something closer to like three quarters pot or could have even gone sized up to pot given that, you know, we're the player profile we're playing against and um, kind of how dynamic the sport is. I think there are going to be lots of hands that the whale is going to feel um, pretty happy about continuing. So yep. I think a big size here is appropriate definitely big and you did it you went pretty big um looks to be like 75 percent pot mm -hmm. guessing the whale does something other than fold they call um now the turn is a 10 of diamonds so overcard and you know puts up another three straight so queen jack gets there uh there's 431 in the pot villain has uh, well john is the effective stack with 12 uh, 76. So essentially 1300. And now you get the turn lead on the 10. Villain leads 322. <laughs> Villain leads 322 into 431. Would I raise here? Um, you want the short answer or the long answer? I think Give me the long answer. I don't The long answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wanted to see what the long answer is. <laughs> like, you just have a set on a board where you're going to, like, a queen, a jack, a seven, a six, all spade. Uh, put up a four liner, a spade completes a flush. So, you know, there's lots of river cards where you, you're probably not going to get the value jam anyway. Um, I imagine that with a set here, you're probably getting stacked when villain has a straight pretty much always, but another, another bad thing about like a, you know, a spade, a 
queen, a jack, a six, a seven, is that all of those cards kill the action versus they're like two pairs. They've got a ton of like, you know, pair plus draw to pull from in order to, you know, to call like jack 10. I, I just don't think like a whale is betting 322 on the turn and folding to a jam. So you just have like a really big target um, with your value hand that makes me want to put the money in right now when I can, uh, when I know that I can before we get like some sort of like flush. Com- I'm not really super worried about the flush completer, but all the four straights, th- those are the ones that scare me the most. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. I totally agree with you on all that. That's sort of what I was seeing on the turn here as well. It's like, okay, he's got a straight or something better than pocket eights. It's, you know, curtains. We're, yeah. It's curtains for us anyways. And, um, you know, if I, I was honestly impressed that this player found the donk on this turn card to, to be fair, like I did not like. I think this is a, a pretty reasonable card to to dong on the turn. I think a lot of my you know flopsy betting range would. Huh? <laughs> I don't think it's a super reasonable card to dong on on the turn. Personally. You don't think that I'm gonna have like a big checkback range on this on this turn? Uh, I mean, <sighs> no, not really. I mean, maybe okay, not versus. Assume I'm not playing versus a whale. Like, let's just say. How this can guy... I assume that? Like the. the... <laughs> The whale knows they're a whale, right? They, they don't like think he doesn't they, they think he's think a whale. A treasure, right? <laughs> he Plus, he's a strong rig. The size that they use is like obscenely big. So, like, even if they use, like, even if they find like the right turn to like lead on, their seventy five percent turn sure. bet is like way, way too big. Yeah. With all that said, okay. like, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not impressed. But I, I guess <laughs> you know, you can be impressed if you wish. Um. But yeah, I just jammed the turn. Uh, there's right. that's long and short of it is I just jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came to the same conclusion. Jam. Whoa. Yeah, they folded. Oh, I thought I said he was a whale. Um, I mean, they could be betting like pocket sixes here. Something like yep. that. Maybe like yep. sixes, sevens. Some sort of like random five or like a ace nine or something. I can't reveal the whole cards. My my mouse is uh, hating me at the moment. So, oh, well, he ended up having a seven of diamonds. So, yeah. So they had flopped a gut shot, turned open ender without a pair. So, like, yeah. I mean, this this hand, unfortunate, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. All right, we're one for one on on. Would you raise here? All right. All right. Um, so you have an ace and a five of clubs in hand number two. Yep. Looks like hijack opens. You're in the cutoff. Hijack opens men. You three bet to seven big blinds. Um, hijack has hundred big blinds, and they call. Uh, so, oh my god, what am I doing? Days without error. Oh boy, we're, me. we're we're falling falling apart here on YouTube. They just saw like the next two hands as well as like future actions in this hand. It's quite the debacle. Um, yeah, so you three bet the ace five of clubs. I imagine villains are reg. Yes. Okay. You flop bottom pair with a backdoor flush draw on king seven five. Um, one fifty five in the pot. I actually think you could bet. You could bet with this exact hand. Um, you could also check with this hand. I think checking is going to be the primary action, though. Um, I kind of do like betting here sometimes, but that's... Don't yeah, having a backdoor flush draw is really nice. Having backdoor flush draw is nice. Having a five, like when the five pairs, is, is also kind of nice. Um, I think my preference, though, would not be to bet ace five, maybe like a five, six suited or something like that so that I can have like two pair on five, six, and then have trips when the five pairs, um, as well as have, you know, the backdoor flush properties. You check ace five, totally reasonable. Uh, 155 in the pot, villains got 950. You got them covered. Turn, you turn trips and they bet 75% pot. Would you raise? Um, I don't think so. I couldn't imagine constructing a low equity raising range here. Yeah. 
Once I check back the flop. Yeah. Like, I think I just call and then let them do whatever on the river. Like, and play play rivers accordingly. But I... So, like, yeah. Why, like, you know, I think to, like, the viewer, it might be a little confusing. It's like, okay, in both situations, we have a really strong hand on the turn and, like, face a bet. Like, get bet into. And in one spot, it's, like, very obvious jam. And in this spot, you know... Why Why not, like, in the other hand, let them do whatever they want to on the river? I guess, like, one of the fears we talked about, another hand is just, like, how many rivers there are that, like, we don't get to value bet, and they might not, you know, they might not yeah. get value owned or whatever because of, like, how many four-liners are possible. That seems like much less of a risk here. Um, I guess, like, the risk, the small risk here is, like, you know, we, we miss out on value from, like, flush draws or something like that. Yeah, like, in the other hand, there, there was a three-straight, Eight, nine, ten, with sixteen cards that make a four liner, as mm -hmm. well as the, you know, if we remove those four cards, um, like the flush draws, that'll it's gonna be like twenty something cards. It's gonna be like in the in the lower forty percent of rivers that create a flush or a four liner. In the other hand, in this one, there's no four liner possible. And the only really shifting card would be a diamond. Um, and I think we actually have like some ace, queen, ace, jack of diamonds that take this line where we three bet pre and then maybe don't bet, don't see bet the flop. So like we, we do have flushes in our range. I, I guess the last hand we had flushes in our range too. Didn't have a bunch of the, the straights in our range. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, just, I, I just think there's like way less danger here. Um, as well as villain not having, you know, a great defense range when they face a turn raise. Whereas in the last hand, I thought they had a lot of hands they could call the jam with. In Jack this 10, one, I, queen 10. Yeah. yeah, I think they have way fewer hands that can call your turn raise, which influences what I want to do. Yeah, I think that everything you said makes a lot of sense. I agree with uh with all of that i ended up flatting as well um quick question when you like go through that thought process do you like is one of your next thoughts like oh i should have like a bluff raising range here like i should have one given like that there isn't a good defense range on their part given like you know all the things that we said like um that's sort of like the next thing that i think about and sometimes like i worry that like i just take it too far and it's easy up, to like you know yeah. I, th I think it's a great question and like I think you're right on both accounts that it's very easy to take it too far. Like it, it's, it's a good question. It's just, you know, buyer beware, right? Like you have to proceed with cautions caution after like, you know, raising, um, raising this turn probe and you do it too many times. Then all, all of a sudden, like, you know, villains start like betting, um, like a lot of their second tier hands and just calling down, like, Granted, the anonymity of, of the platform that Tactical Tuesday listeners will probably be playing on helps. Um, if you're playing like live poker, playing on a site with like a screen name, you know, you you take this line like 10 times, they, you get bluff caught 10 times, or you take this line, say 30 times, you get bluff caught 10, and every single time you had like a complete air ball. I think it starts to become pretty easy to to figure out what you're doing and what the appropriate counter is. So yeah, like I think you're right about you know bluff raising. I think it's reasonable. I just think it's it's a thing that like you you could take too far if you really really overdid it. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, so we call. River is a jack. There's 381 in the pots and. They have 835 behind. Um, I think this is another like really good reason to not raise the turn. Just I didn't mention it, but I do think they, they have a size on the river that is jam. And with, with like their their lower equity bluffs, and it's like really, really, really nice when they have this size in their arsenal. And it's gonna be one of their more preferred sizes, uh, I think, in, in at this node. Um so yeah, rivers a jack. Villain jams for eight thirty five and a three eighty one, and yeah, you you obviously call with trips. Yeah, and an ace just gotta fade the pocket sevens. Yeah, and, and we do. They have the ace of diamonds, queen of spades, which is not the worst candidate for them to take the actions that they took. 
blocking aces, ace king, and king queen. Um, essentially, putting a lot of pressure on your um, queen, queen's region, queen's region, jacks, tens, nines, eights, seven x, etc. That that region of your range. Mm -hmm. So, kudos to villain for getting stacked. And uh, <laughs> I guess coming up after the break, we'll field or I will field two more questions of can you raise uh, st stick around coming at you. The decision to enter a hand is fundamental to poker strategy too tight and they know what you have too loose and you're easy to run over. Reflop Bootcamp from Chasing Poker Greatness is a comprehensive guide to locking down your preflop game and creating true range advantage. Eight days of guided training, over 60 optimal ranges, and access to a dedicated community of players that will push your preflop game from a place of weakness to your greatest strength. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com slash bootcamp. Available now. In a world where a fish dog bets the flop and you don't know what to do, one man Coach Brad Wilson. has a surefire plan to neutralize flop leads and rip that dunk to shreds. Nuffle. Available now. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com slash Nuffle. Rated R. 100 NL player, former Sergeant Elijah Shears. Before I got Nuffle, I had run into a lot of dock bets. And I think once you play a certain amount of hands, you know there's something wrong with our opponent's strategies, but you don't know how to play to maximize CP against it. And it's very frustrating. I looked at the document and I couldn't believe that I paid money for it. I actually doubted that it could provide value because it was so brief. But since then, it's repaid me just over and over and over again. And it's one of the most consistent money makers built into my strategy that sheds light on just how bad your opponents are. And it took me 20 minutes to perfect it. And it's just amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm speechless. It's just that good. The simplicity of it is part of it being a masterpiece. <laughs> Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com slash courses. All right. We're back. Uh, made a little bit of a misstatement there before the break. I said going to field more questions, but I guess it's just going to field more question um, <laughs> in these, these final two hands. So let's break down the action and make our way to question. John, you can... Give it a I go. don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't go well when I try to do this usually. Yeah, you got to get reps in, though. You can't be afraid. Right, can't right, be afraid right. of the node, you know? Got to <laughs> get reps in. Got to play it so you can get better. MP reg opens to $25, uh, 510. We three bet the pocket tens to 80. Everyone else folds. MP calls. We get the queen 10, 9, 2, or queen, <laughs> queen 9, 8, 2 hard flop. We got pocket tens. Um, Flop a gut shot, back for flush draw, second pair. A lot of good stuff going on. Um, I think there is a small argument for C betting the flop, but one of the nice things about this combination of pocket tens is that like we get we have a little bit of protection in in the form of like a jack not being that bad. Um, so really the only overcards that we're kind of worried about are like an ace and a king. Um, so I think there's also a big argument for just checking back, taking our equity, seeing what happens. Yep. Going for two streets of value, maybe depending on depending on runouts. I agree. I think you could go either way. Like you could bet, you could check. Um, looks like you check, and you get there on the turn with a nice little jack dropping down. So you have a straight uh, queen jack eight nine board. There are two hearts, two clubs, one eighty five in the pot. Villain once again bets. 75 percent ish um would you raise always the same always the question right we, we made it we made it the question would i raise
I don't think so. But I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, maybe I should raise. This is a tough one, John. This is the toughest one so far because I'm like trying to visualize like all the things that can happen, right? Like, and then like thinking about like raise size. So, what raise size is, you know, should we use here? My gut intuition tells me like small, a small raise size. But then I see a lot of like terrible river spots where we raise the turn and the board pairs or we raise the turn and a flush completes and like and we get dumped into and, and that's that that is like just ugh, that's the worst i i think i would rather call with range so that i can have all those flush draws and boats in my range when the river comes yeah so i think just like to like break down what you're what you're getting at here is that like when we raise here we define our hand so much that on a lot of rivers we're going to have a tough decision because it's going to be very obvious to villain what what our raising range is, what our value raising range is um, on the turn. And so what you're trying to avoid here is that like, okay, look, there aren't lots of, there aren't tons of bad rivers for us here in the sense that like, we're always going to have a straight on the river, but there are lots of bad rivers in the sense that like, if we raise here, define our hand and then, and then some, some sort of equity shifting river comes, we're going to be capped to, to yeah. a straight and a smart strong reg uh is going to be able to take take advantage of that by just like donking donk jamming lots of rivers and putting us in ridiculous spots with bricked flush draws you know maybe even like counterfeited two pair um well it's i don't think it's so, so cut and dry as that it's that they could <laughs> yeah yeah sure. like the option is on the table for them there so when they do yeah. do it now all of a sudden we're guessing as to like are they doing that or sure. should I just fold when the board pairs and they just like rip the river? Like, yep. and you don't really know, like you're kind of like just hoping that you find the, the strong reg that will do it with their like busted flush draws on the board pair. But you could just as easily be running into a player that is only going to donk jam with boats when the board pairs. And that mm -hmm. like that scenario is like so devastating compared to the other one that like, yeah, I, 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 you just get, you just end up in no man's land so often yeah. when you, when you raise a turn. All of this being said, yeah, yeah, I, I, okay, I, I think I, I won't even like go, go down like an alternative path, but yeah, I, I think you should just call, call the turn with this hand. Um, there Wait might be a world, baby. might be a world where like you could raise with like a ace king of clubs ace king of hearts or something like that and it, it may like may make some sense for you know the the inverse of everything we just said <laughs> yeah so um let's go yeah river's a tray of spades um let me try to think about i'm not gonna look at what they do because i i want to think about it so you don't raise a turn um you're not gonna have a ton of straights I don't think Jack 10 was the nuts. You've got tens, um, like your ace 10 suited. <sighs> Two of them had a backdoor flush draw or one of them had a backdoor flush draw. One of them had a front door flush draw. King 10 suited a gut shot on the flop. You're probably betting the gut shot. Um, so it seems as if you, you probably do have a range comprised of not a lot of straights, some straights, but not a lot which makes me believe that villain um, when they do bet, if they do bet are, are going to choose a big size. Um, just thinking about like what size, like all in is clearly a, an option. Um, and then I guess their other option would be some sort of like 1.5 X where they don't put all the money in, but they put a lot of the money in uh, maybe pot. I think that would be my expectation as it relates to like the the, the river size that you face in this scenario. Um, so three eighty seven in the pot. Let's see if they do bet even. Ooh, they choose a size that I did not consider at all. Half pot. A a two question hand. Would you raise? So 
before I was speaking of their bluff region. And now when they use this size, I think they have a set. And I would definitely raise. Or like Queen Jack or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I don't think, I mean, you have a straight, so of course you raise. Like what's, what's the, that, that, that I, that I think is like not even, not even really like a, a question. <clears throat> I think like one of the, one of the questions that might arise here is, is something like, do we, do we get called? Do we expect to get called by worse when we have tens? And if we, you know, if we don't, then how do we play this? But I, I know, like, I, I know kind of your philosophy is like, we just, we just always have the best hand year. Um, and it's, you know, they would almost certainly pick larger sizes if, if they had King 10 or something like that. So, uh, just slam dunk razor. But I think like, I could see like a, a listener or, or, you know, someone else just saying something along the lines of like, well, I don't, I don't expect to get called by queen Jack or pocket jacks when I raise here. And I expect their calling range to be mostly 10 X or sometimes get jammed on by King 10. If they decide to use the size on the river with, with King 10, that doesn't feel great. Like raising I don't think doesn't... I jam, honestly. I think I, I raise smaller than jam with yeah. with your hand to to try to get called by those jacks and queen jacks like a small raise on the river because we retain straights when we flat the turn and like <laughs> villain should be aware of that that like we're probably not raising our straights on the turn which means like our range does have straights on the river so like I don't want to go super greedy with with tins for like all of it I I would rather yeah place a bet of like. 500 or 600, something like that, um, to target their like sets or two pairs. Hmm. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I don't remember what size I went on the river. I hope. Ah. Okay. Oh, five, nice. two, five, five so. yeah. yeah. And they folded. So they folded. Uh, Ooh, they folded the old seven high, six, seven of spades. So wow, they really threw me for a loop there. I did not expect a half pot bluff. It's like trying to fold out my bricked flush draws and. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you, I think it's pretty terrible. King Jack. <laughs> like, I, I think that that size is pretty bad. Like that is pretty inefficient size on their part. If that like, why not just bet a third if you're trying to fold out like those hands. All right. Just in case I have eight X of clubs. <laughs> yeah. The good news for them is though, they threw me for a loop on tactical Tuesday. So they, they made me look like a, uncultured swine publicly <laughs> with their terrible river size here. So I hope this $166 donation was worth it. Um, final hand. You got another ace five in the cutoff. Face a three bet from small blind. I imagine their reg. Yeah. Uh, you start the hand with about 300 bigs, small blind three bets to 11 big blinds. So two thirty in the pot. John's got 1200 behind. Um, Flop is jack six five with the jack of spades. So you have bottom pair with the backdoor flush draw. This seems real familiar, except this time you're the caller, and the other time you were not. Yeah. Um. They bet. I I, I'll say like I I don't think that this uh player in the small blind was particularly strong, right? Um. I think like there are already like some signs like him using exactly eighty dollars on the flop is a is an indicator. Most of the time when regs are like betting a third, they're using a hot key and um well Jack Six Five, like five six of diamonds is also a board where you're typically using bigger bets. Sure, sure. So their yeah. like sizing choice here is also feels a little suspect. Yeah. So not a fish, but don't think he's one of the stronger regs in the pool. Yeah, tweener. <laughs> um they bet eighty, you call. Turn is the nine of clubs. Um they bet two eighty now. probably think about folding here i mean this is going to be like one of the eh, it's definitely not one of the worst hands because i have like two over types lots of like no pair type stuff that gets to this turn um but you know definitely an argument for like saying like hey instead of like a bottom pair continuing with bottom pair why would you you know pick like diamond diamond hands or even hands that aren't, aren't don't have a pair that have a little bit more dynamic equity and are a little bit more straightforward to play on the river but i also think that the player profile that we kind of peg this guy as and again he uses exactly 280 on the turn um is very likely to be over bluffing especially when they start out with a one third on the swap yeah i think that's a good connection to make like that 
you know, the, the profile in question when they use a third on Jack five, six is not super indicative that they have like the overpair region, um, mm -hmm. of their range, which is kind of what they're repping on the turn nine. They're kind of saying they have aces, Kings and Queens. There's going to be some removal there for them betting a third versus like half or 75%, yep. um, which, which is nice. So the, the hand that like, you got to be deathly afraid of would be like Jack's <laughs> because yes. yeah, yeah. like that, that, that's a hand that like kind of fits the bill where, okay. Right. Like they, they just don't want to like blast you out of the pot, um, when they flop top set, Yeah, but you know, that's only three combos. So. River is the ace of diamonds. So you call the turn, 950 in the pot. River is the ace of diamonds, so it completes the front door flush, gives you two pair. Um, I, I have less than pot behind. I have 843 in my stack. The pot is $950. Yeah, I don't expect them to bet the river, but who knows what that means. Um, I just think like the flush completer and the ace, both bad for their kings and queens region. Um, they're like flush draw with overcards. They don't have those. I guess I have. Well, they don't have flush draws with overcards anymore because they have flushes. Mm -hmm. um, but the Ace of Diamonds removes their flush draw and overcard region of like Ace, Jack of Diamonds, Ace, King of Diamonds, Ace, Queen of Diamonds, Ace, Ten of Diamonds. I think that's pretty nice. So I, I would not expect them to bet um, the river. <laughs> Ah, God! Why do why do I do this, John? Why do I, why do I do this? <laughs> With all that said, they they bet half pot on the river, um, somehow leaving like three hundred and forty three behind. I have no idea what they're saying they have or what they're doing, but you've got two pair and flushes almost certainly want to jam and sets almost certainly want to jam. So if they have like ace jack, then they have ace jack, I guess, but. Even Ace Jack, I think, just jams. Like, come on, I have less than pot. Are they really gonna like bet five hundred with Ace Jack? Maybe, maybe like the flush getting there, and they think they need to size down or something like that with like top set or Ace yeah. Jack. But like, even those hands, I think they just generally just just jam the river, like you said. I think flushes just jam the river. Um, I, I think the one region of their range that I didn't really speak about, like I, I talked about, like their value, like what they were repping, which is why I, like I expect a check on the river. But I do think like Queen Ten and King Queen can bet the river like with what about props. like ace king ace queen i would think that's less likely but having said that i'm convinced that when you call the river they're going to turn over ace king or ace queen. Like, make, <laughs> me, make me look like an idiot like <laughs> i mean what i'm thinking about like raising here like i'm i'm trying to think of like okay what hands are you going to bet this size and then call right i'm like okay ace king ace queen maybe they make sense it's just bluffing the flop bluffing the turd and made a pair on the river didn't feel like they could jam felt like that might be too big and so they picked the big size instead to try to get called by a jack maybe that's like what they did um another region might be like jack nine suited maybe but i'd be that's about it i think i don't know what other hands can call the jam on the river yeah i don't know either i don't know what value they have which when i don't know what value they have i tend to just put it in and like try to force them to find hands that will call the jam like maybe yeah. they do have ace king or ace queen and they're just like messing around yeah. um so i think i do jam but it's really really thin and i'm not even sure how great jamming is but i probably do just because like they use this size like i know right uh like I really it. you gotta I knew you, it. you gotta flush bro like get out of here i knew it oh this is i bricked this one I had a good streak going. We went three for three, and then I just couldn't find the raise here. Couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah, I mean, they have king-queen, so, like, that's, again, that, that's, like, the hand, the bluff region that I think, like, does bet. And, like, king-queen makes all this. And they may just have king-queen here every time, <laughs> and nothing other than king-queen. And so, like, whether you raise or call doesn't really matter because they just have king-queen. Yeah. Um, every other hand checks or jams. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. just, or they have king-queen or queen ten every time so you can call or jam just depends like you do you want like blue line padding or red, or line. red line padding um yeah. it's like refresh your hud and see see what you need help with and, <laughs> and decide your action based on that exactly exactly all right well that's gonna do it for today's episode of tactical tuesday 
Um, for those listeners who, who are wondering, you know, Wolf, Wolf tryouts um, got filled up. And if you're in the village, you're interested in a future Wolf tryout, we're going to open the doors. I'm not exactly sure what the frequency is going to be, but uh, send me a direct message. I'll put you on a list and we'll message you first when the doors open before I go public. So, you know, if you want first dibs for future Wolf tryouts, join the village and send me a DM and I will have a website up that will be wolftryouts.com eventually. But that's, yeah, gonna gonna take a month or so. So those are the paths. I don't got anything left for Tactical Tuesday. See you next week. See you next week. Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to chasingpokergreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community, book a coaching session, or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast. Are you a lone wolf searching for the ultimate pack? The CPG Wolf Program is a close-knit brotherhood hell-bent on one thing only, chasing poker greatness. Powered by Bleeding Edge Wolf Strats and led by Coach Brad and his lieutenants, CPG Wolves are systematically prepared for almost any spot they'll encounter on the green felt. If you want to plug into an elite team and have a step-by-step -step game plan to realize your full poker potential, you can apply at cpgwolves.com. Space is limited, and the pack is only as strong as its weakest member. So only the hungriest, grittiest, and most driven will be accepted into the program. Applications are open at cpgwolves.com.